Welcome, brothers and sisters. So, um, yeah, we can all admit that, um, we can all admit that, um, I've been in these, I've been in these, uh, I've been in this, uh, this YouTube sector for quite a long time. You know, before I ever started making videos, which was about three or four years ago, you know, um, I was, I was just sitting back listening, <laughs> you know, just sitting back, peeping the scenery, you know, watching how, watching as things transpired, you know, I listened to, uh, you know, SWP, I would listen to, uh, Big B. Kell, Black Ram, a lot of MGTOW brothers, like, you know, back before, before all of this, you know, before the Ivmore exodus, the black exodus from MGTOW, you know, um, I've been in, I've been in this, I've been listening, you know, I've been listening, I've been in this, this space for quite some time, and, um, you know, when I, when I came across this space, I always seen it as a, you know, I always had that, that all in together mentality, my mentality has always been all in together, it has never been you know, that's why I can, that's why I can, you know, I can big up SYSBM, I could big up EBM, I could big up the black MGTOW sector, I could, you know, I, um, I became a member of Ivmore, I was, I was basically made a member of of SYSBM by its founders back when they had the SYSBM website before it got taken down I guess hacked or something but even back then I saw you know I, I mean back then you know those were the heydays and I saw I saw infiltrators, you know, I saw, I saw infiltrators coming into that space and I, I can spot these dudes from a mile away. You know, it's, it's the type of dude who they have the opposite spirit of all in together. Like we're, we're all one brotherhood. We're all fighting for the same cause. You know, there were there were dudes coming into this space and I could tell that they they weren't here for, you know, they weren't here to necessarily help black men. They were here to get views. They were here to get popular. They were here to. To divide and conquer, because a lot of these dudes did a lot of shady shit, man. A lot of them would, you know. Like when they see black men beefing with each other, they would take sides in the matter, you know, and they would sit around and talk about it because that was a way for them to get views. They would do that little divide and conquer bullshit where, I mean, there are dudes in this space. Y'all got to know that there are dudes in this space that are not here to help so-called black men they do not give a damn about you they're only here to get views they're here to get popular where did they, i mean these dudes was just johnny come lately they just came out the woodworks and they didn't have that spirit they didn't have that brotherly spirit on them they had that that spirit of selfishness that egotistical spirit where it was all about them and their egos. It was all about what they can get out of this space. 
And many of the dudes who, who had their channels flagged down back during the, the whole gender war debacles, part one and two, I guess SYSBM will be three, Passport Bros will be four. <laughs> but uh, back in the first and second, uh, but this was mainly during the second um, gender war period, man. But I, I seen these dudes coming. I seen, I, I saw, you know, like a lot of dudes would think that these are women flagging down these channels. But actually, these are these infiltrators. These are these dudes who was in this space, who had came, who had come to this space. Like they were already talking about little shit here, little shit there, but they weren't necessarily red pill. They were like these, you know, the 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 thing that I hate the most about, I mean, that I, that I despise the most about some black men is their inability to take sides they 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 have no opinion they're just like like they operate like they don't they're not really a part of what's going on with black men they're just spectators that's how they act i'm a spectator and i'm just gonna sit around and talk about all the shit that's going on but when it comes down to ever taking sides you know they always got an excuse these are dudes that you cannot trust you cannot trust the lukewarm negro you know will not stand up for anything always taking sides always being the 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 comic relief you know now I seen these dudes, man. I seen these dudes. I seen what they was about, and I called them out a long time ago. You know, a lot of those videos, I, I um, I, I got rid of those. I didn't have to do it that many times, but see, when I when I speak to black men, I don't have to say names. I'm not going to say a person's name. I'm just going to deal with the issue. I'm not going to talk about the person because I'm not with the ad hominem bullshit. I am about exposing lies. You know, I, I don't attack people, but I will attack an idea. You know? And I don't really attack the idea. I just give you a different way of seeing something. So, I apologize if this video has a lot of noise in the background. I'm in this car driving and uh, it's kind of raining out here. So, I have the, um, the uh, windshield wipers on. But, like I said, man, I want y'all to know that, you know, before before these dudes came out of nowhere and tried to try to try to take control of what of the discourse. You know, I can see see, I see a lot of things, man. I see a lot of things. Like I said, those were the heydays of the so-called manosphere, where where it was actually a manosphere. It wasn't like a little clique or a little group that called themselves the manosphere. It was an actual manosphere. <laughs> like, if you see a black man, he coming into this space, and he's talking about pretty much the same issues that you're talking about, that he was considered, like, he was considered in the manosphere. That's, that's it you know what I mean you didn't have to be a part of no no clique or no group it doesn't it didn't matter what group you was in even whether you was claiming SYSBM EVM uh, Ibmor the manosphere it didn't matter if you were talking about the issue if your main goal was trying to bring clarity to black men then we, 
you know, you was considered a part of the manosphere. And, you know, but like, as I stated, man, I, 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 I peeped these dudes a long time ago. And then, you know, kind of in the third phase of, of the manosphere, it's like it became, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot of dudes who came out of nowhere. And they were talking about. They were discussing issues that that we had that we had been broken down years ago. They were, you know, and they were. I mean, we had already mastered those um, talking points and those issues. So we were on to we were on to bigger and better things, man. We were better. We were, you know, it's sort of like if you know your if you know. Uh, basic mathematics, arithmetic, uh, adding, subtracting, <laughs> multiplying, you know, and then you move on to something like algebra, trigonometry, or something like that. You're not gonna want to go back, and you're not gonna go back and and play with with basic mathematics, addition, subtraction, multiplying. You know, you're definitely you're not gonna go back to those things. But I did see a lot of new dudes. I mean, nothing was wrong with it, but I'm saying I just saw a lot of new dudes coming. And to me, and to to brothers who are like were in the first wave, you wasn't really saying nothing to us because we had already dealt with those those issues. We had already we had already went down that um went down those roads. So we were on a we were on a different wavelength. We were we were we were uh practicing trigonometry at this point while they were still while they're still uh, you know dealing with the A, Bs and Cs of what this thing is all about. That's what happens when you're dealing with that red pill. You know, it's, it's, it's not just one red pill, it's multiple red pills. I mean, a lot of times you got to figure this, th- this stuff out. You got to make a, I mean, when you take a red pill, you still have a choice in the matter. With each red pill that you take, you have a choice as to what you're going to do. You know, you take that red pill and you decide if you're going to go back to being a simp <laughs> or <laughs> purple pill or you know or if you're going to just deal or you're just going to you're going to uh, deal with that as it is that red pill is basically reality i mean that's a short phrase the red pill represents reality it represents what's real you know unshaped unsculpted unmolded by our minds that's what the red pill represents it represents the truth you know and if and sometimes when you 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 hear a truth you might you know when sometimes when you hear the truth you might be like oh i'm not willing to accept that you know because because of my personal experiences now the truth is the truth no matter where it's coming from you know but you know this is this is what this is what a lot of simps and a lot of purple pill type dudes do you know they they'll hear the truth you know and they'll equate it they'll say well well that ain't me you know they'll use some excuse to negate the facts negate that red pill Cause that shit is hard to accept. <laughs> red, the red pill means that you have accepted that truth. You know, and that that red pill is designed to keep you safe. Now, a lot of us, you know, we take the red pill, then we gotta go back in, into the world 
and get our asses handed to us because you know we we just can't believe it you know we you know we ain't trying to hear that you know we're not trying to hear that truth we're not trying to deal with that reality and we'll do anything like a like like have you ever you know sometimes when you make a video dudes will attack you they will attack you because that is that's what that represents that represents those men who do not want to accept this reality they don't want to accept things for what they actually are they want they want to fabricate things in their own mind because that's how they they deal with it you know i mean i understand it i mean you i mean because as I stated, you know, you got brothers out here committing suicide because of that red pill. I mean, because when you got to deal with that reality, you know, whatever reality, you know, it doesn't matter what re reality it is. You, when we deal with the reality of of uh, of black men and their plight and their, you know, dysfunction. You know, we, um, you know, that's something we have to deal with. We have to, we, when we understand that most of the things that the Negro, the Negroes indulge in are basically coping mechanisms. When people hear such truth, <laughs> when people hear that black men are in a, in a, uh, a never ending cycle of coping mechanisms, but we, you know, we dealing with trigonometry, we understand these things to be facts. You don't have to tell us a thousand times. We don't have to go down those roads for, you know, for that knowledge to um, to become, you know, um, for us to understand. You know, we don't have to go down those roads. We don't have to. We don't say no and then end up going out in the world just to just to realize that that is factual because a lot of times when you don't accept that that truth you got to go out into the world and you got to experience a lot of pain you know if like if I, if I told you that you know I asked the question in, 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 a, in a recent video what what benefit do a, does a man get out of a relationship and I basically said none <laughs> And no man could ever, and no man can uh, prove that they get something out of re these relationships. I mean, these modern day relationships. I'm talking about these relationships that men are getting in now. None of them can present a single benefit. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> anything that they say is a benefit can be proven that it's not actually an, an actual benefit, man. But I understand, you know, when you talking to a broke dude, like a lot of dudes, when they're broke, when we, that's why, that's why I always, that's why I've been trying to tell brothers they got to get their stuff together, man. You got to get your stuff together because, I mean, that's got to be priority one. Because if you, if, when you don't uh, have your stuff together, you tend to, you tend to make a whole lot of uh, mistakes, man. You know, you make a whole lot of mistakes. I talk about black, black boys, black male children, and why they are the least protected group of people on this planet, and they need to be protected. You know, these women sitting around, running around, talking about uh, people need to protect them. You know, black men need to protect us. But who's going to protect these little boys out here, man? Because once they got you in that system, you know, it's, it's, it's like once they got you in their system, you know, your life, you know, I mean, it just basically becomes about about. I mean, you, you start running. It's like once you're in the system, now you're running from that thing. You're running from 
you're running from that mistake that you made. You know, that's what most dudes stay stuck in for their entire life. Once you make that first mistake, now you're running from that mistake. You know, especially like, let's say you got caught selling, selling some drugs or something, you know, you got caught selling some drugs, you know, and now, you know, you go to jail, you got a criminal record, you know, you mean, you, I mean, you a young kid, <laughs> you go to jail, you got a criminal record, now you, now you on the run, now you're running, I mean, even though you you, you're out of jail when you're not on probation. You're still on the run. You're still running from that one mistake that you made a hundred years ago, man. You know, and even though that they, you know, there are ways to get around it, you, you know, you don't want to go through that. You don't want to have to deal with that as a so-called black man. You don't want. To, see, that's why the that's why the male child has to be protected. The male child has to be protected at all cost. He cannot end up in the system. And these Negroes, you know, they go out there, they get a bunch of money, they get these baseball, football contracts. I mean, these dudes are cautionary tales, man. They don't really understand where they are in this world, where they stand. They, this, this is what I mean by not accepting the truth. Bill Cosby is a case in point. Bill Cosby is a case in point of a man who would not accept his, you know, the truth. He thought that because he was Bill Cosby, that he could, you know, go out there and do whatever he wanted. He thought that he was famous and he can indulge in all the wickedness of this society. Just because he saw, oh, he saw, you know, other wealthy Caucasian people enjoying those things, he thought that it was his, he thought that he had made it. He thought the world had changed. He thought he was living in a post-racial society, you know, because he was being protected. He was living inside that plastic bubble, you know, of Hollywood. So, so he thought he was protected, you know, and it, it, as, as, as red pill men, we expose that lie. We expose those lies. Now, if I, if I told black men that you are at war, you have always been at war. The Negro, you know, he going to go back to, I mean, most Negroes are going to run back to their coping, coping mechanisms. Put the fucking blunts and the 40 ounce bottle down, you know, Negro. No, he ain't going to do that. You see these Negroes out there at Miami Beach. You see, you see how black people are. You see how the, you, you see how these Negroes are. A lot of them, you know, you tell them the truth, but they still have to go out into the world and get their asses handed to them. Like this dude, George Floyd. You know, I mean, that was the most high had his hands on that situation, you know. But, you know, I haven't done a breakdown of that that actual thing that happened. But, um, you know, the whole George Floyd thing, you know, they're, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're talking about he was on drugs. We already know he was, you know, he was into to like alcohol and things of this nature. And this is why I tell black men, get on the five steps and adopt the moral code. <laughs> you know, this is very important. This is why am I talking about this shit? That is the truth. That's the truth. Now. In the back of the Negro's head, he gonna be like, "I don't have to listen to this dude. I mean, shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get high. I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna get my blunts. Ain't nobody about to take my, take my blunts. I'm gonna smoke my weed. I gotta smoke my weed. I gotta get high. I gotta get drunk. I gotta have them cigarettes. You know. 
you know, because in his mind, a lot of these dudes mind, they like, what other choice do I have? I need these, I need these coping mechanisms. Like if you're at war and how you've chosen to respond to said war is with coping mechanisms, <laughs> I don't know, you know? Now I know the Negro excuse train, you know, loud and clear. I know the Negro excuses. Oh, but man, man, you see how how you gonna say that the, the, the brothers can't do this and brothers can't do that? That's wrong. You know, sometimes a brother just need to get drunk. You know, sometimes a brother just need to get high. You know, just it, it ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, you tripping, man. How you gonna say something wrong with with that? You know, black, black man could do that. You know, it's legal. The white man said it's legal, so you know. <laughs> you know, a lot of these dudes are fucking pathetic, man. But anyway, I got off way, way, way over here. So, as I stated, man, man, the condition, the the um the um this space that we're in, man, that red pill. That black pill, you can't play no games with that, you know. You can't play no games with that. Once you know something, you can't. Once some, once you know something, you can't unknow it. You know. <laughs> you know. I know that's. I know that's a hard thing to deal with. You know, because a lot of times we learn the truth, and then we want to go back into the world because it's easier. You know, it's easier to to be of the world. It's easier to it's easier to be a um it's easier to be a man of the world than it is to be a man of truth, man. You know, because the world gives you everything. The world, I mean, this society legalizes all kinds of coping mechanisms. Because that's a form of control. You know, black men running around calling themselves kings and, and things of this nature. But they they have no rulership over themselves, man. They cannot even rule over themselves. How are you going to be a king... How are you dudes kings when you cannot rule over said things? You know? Now, we're not going to be... Understand, we're not going to be 100%. Nobody's going to be 100% righteous, but... You know, um... But these are things that you can... You you can deal with. You can um, change. You don't need no fucking blunts in your damn mouth. You don't need no cigarettes. You don't need no alcohol. And you definitely do not need to be out here committing crimes. Because the the damn drugs and the alcohol is what leads to the crimes in the first place. A lot of times. You know? I don't know, man. But when it comes to this this uh this space you know i see a lot of people i see a lot of people i mean i've seen a lot of new dudes come you know and i'm like you know i started to see like with like like this whole you know the the whole high value man thing you know, I, I got I mean, I got nothing against the brother personally or the brothers personally, but I I, I tend to see it as a as a huge distraction. Yes, black men got to get their stuff together. But it seems like I mean, in, in that regard, it seems like black men got to give their shit together for a bunch of useless ass women. We already know that most of these women are useless. They're delusional. They're out their minds, insane, you know, I mean, I guess, I mean, uh, you know, certain dudes feel like it's their, it's their duty to, to waste their time with women. I mean, it's not about, 
it's not about, you know, this. It's not about one person. It's not about him. It's about all the other black men that are following the rant, following this train of thought, you know, and it's it, it, it can become another coping mechanism. You know, it can become a huge fucking distraction while black men are at war. What should black men really be dealing with and talking about and working together and creating networks? Now, of course, the deflection police are going to come over here and say, what are you? Well, what you doing? You know what you doing to help the black man? You know, I'm doing, you know, that's neither here nor there. Don't 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 play the deflection police on this channel. I'm a corpse out your head, you know, but. um. It doesn't matter, man. I'm not here to put no other brother down. I'm here to edify us as a group. You know, I'm trying to get us to see that. I'm trying to get us to see that when we take that red pill, you cannot run from that. You know, you cannot get caught up in delusions. You cannot get caught up in things that that equate to coping mechanisms you know you can't run from the damn truth you know no matter and and that's what a lot of black men would love to do they love to indulge in all kinds of distractions all kinds of coping mechanisms because they cannot deal You know, they just can't deal, man. They get they 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 get caught up in women. They get caught up in money. They get caught up in, in, you know, going out to the clubs, kicking it. All of these things represent coping mechanisms because you're not because we are not dealing with the actual problem. You know, and that is our plight here in America. You know, we all know, like I said, they got brothers over there talking about shit that we already know. We already know we done been down those damn roads. You know, and if that's how a brother needs to work out his, uh, you know, whatever he needs to work out on a personal level, you know, that it is what it is. But, um, we gotta, we, you know, we gotta get understanding, man. We can't get caught up in distractions. We can't get caught up in the way. See, cause when you go down this road, you end up in the same fucking place. You know, you gotta ask yourself, okay, let's say I went down this road where am I going to end up? What I mean, what is the purpose of me going down this road? And what what is what is the purpose and what is the what is going to be the end result of me going down this road? You know, and I could already see where a lot of these roads lead. They lead to nowhere. It's like a person who gets high, you know, they they get high to escape their problems. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they get high to escape their problems. But what they fail to realize is that when the high comes down, the problem is still there. The problem hasn't went anywhere. You still got the same damn problem. Except you got a lot, a lot, a, lot, a little bit less money. And you still haven't dealt with the damn issue, man. You can't escape the truth, man. So it's better to just deal with it. Like every black man knows that black men are supposed to be working together. They supposed to be building networks. They supposed to be and black men do network to a degree, you know, and in, in some ways. They're starting to do it a little bit more now, but I just never, you know, I just never want us to forget, you know, that 
I just never want us to forget the the uh, situation that we're in. I just never want us to get distracted, you know, getting caught up in, in games, you know, with some with women. We know what women are about. We know they're full of shit. We know that they're secondary. At least the vast majority of them are unnecessary. You know, unnecessary. We know that relationships get you nowhere. I mean, relationships. Let's imagine if you you got into a relationship right now. <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, what would be the purpose of doing so, and who would benefit? What is gonna be the result of that? Who benefits? Because you don't benefit. Like I said, once you get into a relationship. Now it, it becomes about it becomes about her, you know. It becomes about making her happy. It becomes about <laughs> I'm talking about for most black men in relationship. It becomes about ma- ma- uh, making her happy, managing her mo- emotions, managing her expectations, you know. Making sure that she I mean, it's like you got to be a full time dev psychologist when you got better. I mean, you got more important things to think about. You got more important things to do. You know. Man, oh, man, oh, man. We got to learn how to recognize, at least within ourselves, we got to learn how to recognize when we are deluding ourselves. When we are trying to distract ourselves because we don't want to deal with a certain truth, with a certain reality, you know, your life might be might be fucked up right now. And instead of dealing with that reality, you know, you know, you might not have a job right now or something. And the reason why you can't get a job because you're too busy getting high and drunk. But instead of recognizing that fucking reality. And dealing with said reality, what we want to do is just get high and drunk as if the damn problem is going to go somewhere. You know. We all know deep down what the issue is. We all know deep down what the problem is, who the problem is. You know. Now, we could talk about B.A.W.'s and their stupidity, you know, and we I mean, we I mean, that's necessary for us to talk about them and for us to, um, you know, deal with, you know, deal with our issues regarding her, because that's it's not really about her. It's really about us. When we talk about women, we're not talking about at least me. And when I'm talking about a woman, I'm not talking about the women per se. I'm talking about the reaction that black men, you know, that that these women or the or the stronghold that these Jezebels have on you. These women are practicing witchcraft. You do understand this, right? So I want us to. To deal with to deal with the actual issue when, you know, even when you broach the subject, I mean, black men. I don't know what it is that is that I mean, I do know what it is, but that's something that we got to We got to deal with. We got to ask ourselves, what what is that thing? What is that stronghold that's on us? The moment a black man starts talking about. Oh, black men need to get their shit together. They need to start working together and and doing their thing and 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 and, and put all the nonsense to the side. Soon as that happens, you gotta examine how you feel when when that happens. We all deal with that. You know, we all deal with that um that thing, and we gotta figure out why. It, um, why we are so affected 
you know. Like a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes come into this space. And the only reason they're here is because this space has become a distraction. You know. Like everybody needs some downtime and, you know, just some chill time. We can't be like on it like um, we can't be focused on our plight. 90, I mean, 100 percent of the time. But we damn sure better be focused on it at least 85 to 90 percent of the damn time because things are serious out here. Nobody's helping you. Nobody's talking about black men. That's why I'm, the name of my my last video was was Passport Brothers versus the Invisible Man. Because you dudes are just basically invisible. You dudes go over these women's houses. You dudes are always doing something for these women. But you are invisible when it comes down to her giving credit where credit is due. She's independent. She got there by herself. No man has ever helped her do anything whatsoever. You will never hear this. I mean, some some of them will admit it, but the vast majority of them are never going to admit that a man actually helped them. They do not honor their men. They turn their children against their fathers. I mean, golly. But we, you still see Negroes constantly, constantly sacrificing themselves. That's that's what the Bible talks about when it says worshiping a false idol. And that's what black men are doing. They're worshiping a, a false idol, a false God. You know. But what I mean, what kind of man does it take to be? I mean, what kind of man do can you do you have to be in order to combat that demon? You know, that that um that force, that 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 spirit that comes over you, you know. Man, you would never do no th nothing like that for a black man. <laughs> You never do nothing like that for your brothers. The most high even set the order. He said the men, women, and then the children. That is that is the order. I mean, first it's the most high. Then it's the Messiah. Then it's man, woman, child. So we have an order to how we supposed to do things. But this is the order that the black man does things in. Women come first. To hell with, you know, to hell with any uh, any man, any other black man to hell with them. Women come first to hell with the brothers. You know. At least, um, I mean, if I'm going to do something for the brothers, I'm going to hold his ass at arm's length. I don't trust that nigga. You know what I mean? That is something that's that that's a deep problem. That black men need to deal with that they have, you know. The Negroes are not even willing to address that. Anyway, I want to get off this video before it becomes too long. You know, but basically we got to be careful, man. We got to be careful that this space and that we do we, we understand where we are. We understand that reality. We want to understand that truth. We do not delude ourselves into thinking otherwise, you know, and we do not deal in coping mechanisms because it's easier to deal with those damn coping mechanisms than it is to deal with the reality of your situation. You know, I know that that's a hard thing. You know, I know that that's a hard thing and it's even harder to pursue. But anyway, brothers, man. You know, I'm going to start. I, I want to open up this channel to, uh, you know, different like, you know, allowing brothers to send me um, things.
things and I mean some of y'all got my email address but I rarely even check my email I am seriously like I am seriously doing a lot of things I mean I wish I could put out video after video after video you know but um I just can't do that but I got things I'm, I got things going on behind the scenes with with brothers. I got um, things in the works that I'm working on. I would like to open up this channel, you know, allow you brothers to send me articles or, you know, uh, you know, ask me uh, or if you want me to make a video about something, keeping in mind that. um. I mean, uh, time is of the essence. I mean, some a lot of brothers have sent me uh, topics that they wanted me to cover. And I do want to apologize to those brothers that I um, were in. Well, I mean, maybe I didn't. Maybe I dealt with those issues. Maybe I didn't. You know, sometimes I'll be like, you know, I don't know if um, I, I, I try to talk about the things that the spirit guides me to talk about, you know. I mean, that's I mean, I have to actually be inspired to make a video. Those videos are inspired by the spirit. That spirit comes upon me and I, you know, I make a video about something. But anyway, brothers, man, on that note, I want to say peace. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you think. Get on the five steps and adopt the moral code.